Hello, everyone. I'm Teresa Hansen, Vice President of Global Content for Clarion Energy. I hope you are all staying healthy and safe. In an effort to keep things as normal as possible during this abnormal time, Jennifer Runyon and I are bringing you the weekly Clarion Energy News. So here are the stories for this week. Story number three. Around the globe, coal-fired generation is increasing. Japan and China are the drivers of new coal-fired capacity worldwide, as the U.S. and Europe continue their move away from the power generation resource. This is according to a new report by the Sierra Club, Global Energy Monitor, Greenpeace, and the Center for Energy and Clean Air. Globally, 68.3 gigawatts of new coal power were commissioned in 2019, and 34.2 gigawatts were retired. This resulted in a net increase in the global coal fleet of just over 34 gigawatts. Nearly two-thirds of the world's newly commissioned capacity was in China, according to the report. Outside of China, the global coal fleet shrank for the second year in a row. The U.S. utilities retired 16.5 gigawatts of coal-fired capacity in 2019, the second highest number on record. Japan, meanwhile, is the top coal-powered nation among the most developed economies, with nearly 12 gigawatts under development in the country. And now for the remaining two stories, I'll send it over to content director Jennifer Runyon. Thanks so much, Teresa. Okay, story number two. Jamaica is reportedly studying the implementation of a pumped storage hydropower plant and water system to guarantee supply amid projected shortfalls. Prime Minister Andrew Holness made the announcement during a speech to lawmakers as part of the 2021 budget. Holness highlighted that during extended periods, extended dry periods, the Kingston Basin experiences water shortage. So the project would pull water from the Middlesex Aquifer in St. Anne Parish and pump it to higher elevations. The water would then be gravity fed to the south coast through turbines, which would generate up to 200 megawatt hours of renewable energy. The Prime Minister added that the system would help Jamaica achieve its goal, its revised target of having renewables account for 50% of its energy supply by 2030. Story number one. Utilities across the globe have had to rapidly implement coping mechanisms and strategies to protect staff customers and their bottom line amid the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic. And that adaption has not been without its challenges, both financial, operational, and social. To see if we can help spread best practices across the sector, Clarion Energy content directors from across the globe are holding a series of webcasts next week to uncover insights from key utilities who have dealt with or are dealing with the challenge of keeping services operational in an age of social distancing and isolation. The series kicks off next Monday with highlights from Asia, which is the reason the region obviously that was first impacted by the virus. And then on Tuesday, April 7th, we'll host utilities from Europe. Then on April 8th, utilities from North America, and then finally on Thursday, April 9th, we'll close out this series with utilities from Africa. You can find registration links for all of the webcasts by visiting power-grid.com and look for the article titled COVID-19 Utility Crisis Management Live Webinar Series. We hope you'll join us. And in related COVID-19 news, Hydrovision announced a no-lose proposition this week for people wishing to attend the event. They said that people who register for the event before April 21st, which is that early bird deadline, they can still take advantage of the early bird rate, but if the travel ban is still in effect when the, when the event is supposed to take place, or if for some reason you're unable to make it, you can roll over your registration for 2021 or get a full refund. That's all I have for you for this week. Stay safe, everyone. I'm Jennifer Runyon. Thank you for watching.